And welcome back to View Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about one of the kind of other more important people uh, in the history of humankind, people that you should definitely know about, uh, people that have changed the way that we look at the world in a fundamental way. And this is, of course, Lady Ada Lovelace, otherwise known as the uh, uh, Augusta Ada King, Countess of Lovelace, uh, Ne Byron, Math Enchantress, and Fairy. So, to give kind of a background on who she was, uh, Lord Byron, which was kind of a very famous poet uh, in the 19th century England, uh, was a bit of a prick and fathered children by many women, of which Lady Ada was one. Uh, she, uh, Lord Byron died her when she was very young, uh, and as kind of a consequence of who he was and his particular lifestyle as a poet, uh, Lady Ada's mother uh, taught her math, logic, and science to kind of prevent Ada from going down the route of poetry uh, and becoming a poet herself. And this kind of backfired. Uh, the discipline, strictness, and hard work and isolation that her mother kind of forced on her uh, kind of helped her to be advance beyond her male peers in mathematics and also kept her from thinking in the way that they kind of her peers might have, or especially her male peers in the maths and sciences, allowing to, her to kind of clearly see opportunities in computing that other people may not have been able to see. Uh, but she certainly took a path uh, off the old block, in, in a sense, uh, as we'll get into in a bit. Uh, but just in general, she is kind of living proof that women in technology belong together, and that the late 20th century intentionally constructed media image to the contrary is total bullshit. Uh, she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greatest minds of her time and was, was renowned for her efforts, all the while meeting kind of like the ladylike etiquette standards of her day. So it's not even that, you know, you can't even meet both uh, of those things, because she's kind of living proof that it's possible. Um, she would have been tutored by uh, De Morgan of De Morgan's Laws, studied differential calculus, and was interested in scientific ideas uh, ranging from phrenology to mesmerism uh, and a lot of other things as well. Uh, she would have, during her lifetime, socialized with the great, uh, some of the great minds of the day. Uh, London, of course, being kind of the center of the world at the time. Uh, so she would have known uh, guys like Michael Faraday, Charles Dickens, and of course, uh, by 1833, she'd met uh, Charles Babbage, um, which you might as sort of a pause, you might be wondering, why is there no video on Babbage in this series? Uh, part of it may be that I actually had heard of Babbage before I started university, uh, but mo I personally think most of what he accomplished pales in comparison with what uh, Lady Ada used it for. Uh, and of course, I'm a si science and software guy, so I might be a little biased in that. Uh, but, I mean, Babbage had the working difference engine, or at least a, a, a mock copy of it, uh, close enough for her purposes. Uh, and the government was interested in, in kind of funding his engine, uh, but the government at the time was only interested in it insofar as it could produce numbers. Uh, specifically, tables of polynomials uh, fed in with input variables for various quantities, uh, and so the difference engine was a machine that, could cap or that was capable of producing the result, uh, or the kind of a general purpose uh, selection of a whole bunch of different polynomials uh, and the kind of results of that. And so the government at the time was not interested in the machine, except as a means to an end. So going back to the video on pragmatism, they were taking a pragmatic step or stance on this, just kind of using the machine to get those numbers, and they didn't care that a more powerful machine could be constructed, i.e. the analytical engine, which is what ba Babbage and Ada would have wanted uh, to be constructed kind of next. And so unlike the difference engine, uh, the analytical engine would actually be a modern computer. It's Turing complete. It's al although it's a mechanical computer, uh, it had everything that you'd need to actually do arbitrary computation, or at least as much arbitrary computation as is possible in the 16 kilo. I can't remember bits or bytes. One of the two. That's a you know. I think it's kilobytes. I think it's 16 kilobytes of memory uh, with the five operations or so uh, that uh, he kind of envisioned. Uh, but the government refused to sponsor the, the project, and so he had to kind of look uh, around the world for other people who would be interested in helping him to build it. And he did find someone. He found an Italian mathematician who was willing to tr basically look at it. And, but the problem was 
uh, is that the Italian mathematician wrote in French. And so we'll, we'll kind of pause for a moment. And you might be curious and kind of look down on the, the government of England at the time for not funding this brilliant thing that is computer uh, science and the con construction of the very first computer. Uh, but there was really good reasons for not funding it. Uh, as late as 1834, London had over a million people and no plumbing whatsoever. Uh, the kind of excrement was piled uh, in the streets and thrown yeah, into the river. Yes. And uh, basically the entire city uh, was more than a little shitty for its inhabitants. And so p plumbing uh, as a whole wasn't actually completed until between about 1859 and 1865. So this was a very uh, un unhealthy and dangerous place to live uh, during that period of time and prior to that period of time in general. And so they didn't fund it. They were doing other things with their time. There was wars going on kind of in that kind of era. So there was other things that were a little bit more pressing. Uh, and so that this Italian mathematician wrote his paper in French. And who was it that got to translate this French paper into English so Babbage could understand it and kind of spread the knowledge of his great invention or ideas to the world. Well, of course, that was Lady Ada. Uh, she was the one who was kind of picked to do the translating from French to English. But by doing so, uh, she added her own notes while she was doing so. Uh, and it turns out that most of the, the value in that report is actually in her notes rather than the report itself. And so this, this part, this initial step towards uh, kind of advancing beyond just the construction of the map or the analytical engine is where she is kind of coming into the picture. Uh, in this paper and, and in other uh, kind of writings, uh, she invented the first algorithm intended to be run on a, a machine. Uh, incidentally, that uh, was for computing Bernoulli numbers. Uh, I'll include a little Wikipedia uh, link for Bernoulli numbers uh, at the bottom of this page if you're curious about those. Uh, making her the first computer programmer, the first person to engage in debugging uh, some of the other programs that were kind of written for the theoretical analytic machine. Uh, she found itch at least one bug in, although it would not be called debugging until uh, much, much later when Grace Hopper literally pulled a bug out of a computer. Uh, she was the original of the idea of computer music and using computers to generate music. That was her idea. Uh, she was the first to come up with the idea of artificial intelligence by computing uh, and was the realistically the first computer scientist, although she called it something different. She called it poetic science, or being a poetic scientist, uh, sort of going back to the fact that she is the kind of family of Lord Byron, the poet. Uh, computer science as, as a field uh, could very easily be framed as poetic science and the application or applied poetry which is kind of neat. Uh, she was the first to attempt to understand the nature of computers and society and how the two will uh, or would uh, go on to change the world. Uh, and there was basically some debate uh, as far as what she was uh, in involved in and how much was heard, how much was Babbage. But realistically, it needed both of them to get their point of view uh, intertwined with each other to the point where Turing could start from it. Uh, Ada, champ or Ada championed Babbage's ideas and vice versa. Uh, so they were kind of a pair uh, and her work was of utmost importance to it. She was the first person to see that arbitrary patterns were possible to spin on looms uh, in light of computers. So she was kind of the first person to kind of catch a glimpse of the possibility of arbitrary com computation being done uh, to the extent that Alan Turing would have kind of gone further with uh, and kind of described in more detail uh, much, much later. Uh, and unfortunately, she died young. She only died at 36, uh, the same age as her father. Uh, she died addicted to opiates and forced to adopt a religion that she avoided her whole life. Uh, kind of a very sad ending to her story. Uh, but still, this is someone who has completely changed the world by adding this science, this poetic science, to the fields that are available for us to study. And we are all in her debt for doing so. And a final quote from Lady Ada herself, quote, I am more than ever now the bride of science. Religion to me is science, and science is religion. 
and that deeply felt truth lies the secret of my intense devotion to the reading of God's natural works, and why, when I behold the scientific and the so-called philosopher as full of selfish feelings and a tendency to war against circumstances and providence, I say to myself, they are not true priests, but they are but half prophets, if not absolutely false ones. They have had read the great page simply with the physical eye and with none of the spirit within. The intellectual, the moral, the religious seem to me all naturally bound up and interlinked together in one great and harmonious whole. There is too much tendency in making separate and independent bundles of both the physical and the moral facts of the universe, whereas all and everything is naturally related and interconnected. A volume I could write on the subject." Unquote. So this is the perspective from Lady Ada, this kind of connection between the view of science as an activity of revealing truth, kind of pointed towards and disposed towards uh, kind of enveloping the, the emotion and powerful uh, expressiveness that was the religion of her age, uh, used and viewed through the lens of this new invention, the computer. So, as usual, uh, are there any questions from the audience today? No questions? And uh, if you have any questions at all about Lady Ada uh, and her invention, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. As usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address, Bitcoin being a payment method that runs entirely on computers, something that would only be possible thanks to Lady Ada. Uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.